Back with another LTA Linear Tube Audio product. These guys make uh, a bunch of different uh, amplifiers and preamps uh, based on this ZOTL architecture designed by uh, David Burning that they, um, I guess, licensed at some point. And it's different than a standard OTL. You can go on their website to read it, but it still has the advantages of having uh, no transformer. Uh, if you consider that to be an advantage, which in their implementations, uh, I think, uh, shows a lot of merit. I reviewed their Micro ZOTL Z2 um, uh, amp uh, back in the day, and I'll, I'll link to that. But this thing, this beast, the Z10E that we're looking at today, is a integrated power amp. Uh, so it drives, uh, it, it's got three inputs, and it drives speakers. It drives headputs, uh, headphones with high and low uh, output, and yes, you eStat guys out there immediately recognize that. It drives eStats as well. There are very few products that drive both um, traditional headphones and eStats. Probably even fewer that also drive speakers. I don't even know that I've ever seen one. I've seen a couple that drive both headphones and um, um, uh, you know, traditional dynamic and planar headphones and e-stats, but they are rare. This is a rare, rare bird of a product. Um, and yeah, let's, let's set this guy down for a sec. Um, it's a two box affair. It's actually not that heavy. I'm grunting as I always do, but it's not that heavy. It's a two box affair and it starts here with this little guy. This is their, um, linear power supply. I'm guessing you can sort of see the triangle power supply in there, and as we know in good um, audio design, especially preamps where you've got you know sensitive gain stages, keeping the power supply uh, physically removed or at least shielded away from the sensitive um, electronics is advantageous as power supplies can send off some noisy stuff. They are connected, tethered to each other. Um, with um, a speak on cable connector, which I just uh, really enjoy. It's got, um, let's see if we can do it here. It's got the most satisfying little, ah, oh, yes, so good, and then you pull that back. Oh. It's just, you know when you're positive. You know when you've got lock. Um, uh, the, I don't, I assume there's probably different umbilical cords you can get. The one it comes with is a, is a nice length. You have a lot of options of where you can put it. It's relatively flexible. Um, so just in terms of livability with the two box system, very easy. Let's, let's take a peek inside this guy real quick. Cause I think it would be interesting to see how the sausage is made. Okay. Under the hood of this very attractive enclosure, um, I believe they have like a design build relationship with um, a company called uh, Fern and Roby, maybe. Um, and I think they do like the machining of, of the aluminum parts and, and whatnot and make the, the enclosure for these guys. Um, okay, so inside we've got um, both, as I said, it's an integrated amp. So we've got a preamp stage and, and then a power amp stage. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here. I won't pretend to know what all this stuff is, especially with this wacky ZOTL design. But um, the the preamp is 12AU7 based, and that's obviously these guys over here. And there's four tubes because it's it, it's a true balanced um, input. And the I don't know that we'll really be able to see too much of the magic here, but the um, the volume attenuation is really nice. You get the clickety clickities. It's I think uh, like um, hundred step. And, you know, it's, they, this is sort of a, a spare, no expense, sort of precision thin film, uh, 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 nichrome resistors and blah, blah, blah. And you can actually put it into like what they call the high res mode where you have 199 steps <laughs> of attenuation and it's um, 128 dB. Uh, and then here uh, is, is the four... Uh, power tubes. These are um, EL84s, which interestingly enough are the same tube that you find in the um, Deckware Taboo, but being used in a completely different configuration, and that's good for uh, 12 watts per channel. So if you're going to run speakers with this thing, you're going to need efficient speakers, which I love and have no problem with, but, you know, a consideration. Um, yeah, that's probably enough of the sausage making. Let's let's get this guy back together and, and talk about some of its its features. Okay, I'm going to get to performance in a sec, um, but let's talk through a few more features just to make sure we're doing this thing 
uh, just as so. Uh, three inputs, nice little clicky switcher. Can't change that with the remote. Uh, volume, you can change with the remote. The remote is um, a simple included Apple affair. Um, no problem there, nice little remote. You do have a switch to go between headphones and speakers. And then you've got um, your uh, ESTAT and your standard headphone inputs. And those both are on concurrently. So you do have to be a little bit thoughtful about if you got multiple things plugged in by accident. Around back, very simple. You got your speaker taps out. Uh, and then you've got your um, two uh, single-ended RCA inputs and a, a true balanced um, XLR input. Small pet peeve. Left and right feel reversed to me, um, but you know, that's that's up to you. <laughs> uh, and then of course the um, uh, speak on power input over there. And you do have uh, output, so you can use this as a preamp if you say um, had another follow on amp behind it. Cool, I guess. I mean, it's, the preamp's awesome, so sure, but you know, maybe missing the point of the all-inclusive, all-integrated uh, deal. Um, one thing that's, that's kind of cool is that um, each of the different inputs uh, retains its own volume level, which I really like a lot, and it remembers that. Um, and like your balance ones will probably be louder than your single ended, or if you have a record player and a DAC or whatever, those might have very different line levels coming in, so that's really handy. Um, I, I did mention the remote, and then I'll try to uh, cut in a little photo or video for you guys, but the this little pixel display um, matrix is really nice and super visible from across the room because it kind of does giant type and just cute stuff like it says warming up when it's turning on and then you can see the volume uh, and I think you can set it to like auto timeout and stuff so if you don't want it like glaring at you while you're like sitting back and listening so there's just a ton of little thoughtful details uh, in here um, and you know there probably should be because it's not a cheap piece <laughs> I think this thing's around seven grand um, but you know seven grand for um, a very premium headphone amplifier uh, a preamp a uh, e-stat energizer and a speaker amplifier um, I mean if you broke that out into components you know you're, you're easily in that in that ballpark so um, I think if you keep that in perspective Nonetheless, it's a, it's a hugely expensive piece, and that can't be ignored. So, how did um, how did the testing go? There's a lot of tests. I, this thing actually took me uh, a ton of listening time because we were sort of jumping between, um, you know, a, a bunch of different uh, e stats. So, with the e stats, um, let's start there. I'll just kind of go down the list. Um, so, uh, our good friends, the um, uh, Stacks 009s uh, as as a reference, and also had the um, uh, ES Labs ES1A uh, as a counterpart to them. I uh, got to listen to these against um, uh, a couple of uh, different energizers uh, to compare, uh, and I, I think the things that sort of stand out for me um, is that uh, the 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 Z10E um, offered a very like clean and articulate sound maybe a little bit drier than some of the other energizers that I was listening to. Definitely more spatial. The sound stage just expands and expands. Um, it felt less force than some of the other energizers. Sometimes E stats have this nature of just uh, sounding like too eager, too chomping at the bit. <laughs> you know, they're so fast. Sometimes it's just it's something about it that the, 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 the timbre just isn't right. And, and I think, um, uh, this is an energizer does a, a, a nice balancing act with that that um, like I said a little more fluid a little less forced maybe a little less impactful bass than uh, some of the other energizers I tried I'm not gonna I don't feel like that's its, its strongest attribute um, and to that maybe a little bit less energy um, than than with some of the ones I was comparing it to um, but yeah just overall you know kind of more natural um, with a little bit less bass authority, but more natural, smoother, and just great spatial presentation. Um, yeah. So then switching over to headphones, uh, the dynamic and planar got to test with a whole bunch of things happen to have, um, both the new and the previous utopia on hand, um, Meze elite, uh, Sesfara, um, uh, what else? Um, Oh, I 
know I'm missing some things. Anyway, I got to listen to a ton of different stuff on that and compared it against uh, a bunch of other tube and solid states amps. So it got got thoroughly uh, explored in that territory. Um, so let's start with this as far as because they are a notoriously pain in the butt headphone to drive. Um, and I think that the uh, Z10e drove them beautifully and honestly better than I've expected. I've heard this as far on a lot of amps. I know what a picky SOB it can be. Um, I would say that I've heard this as far sound better on other things. So if like all I cared about in the world was driving this as far to its peak, I don't know that this is the amp I would choose, but if I was interested in this sort of all-in-one solution, especially something that could drive e-stats as well, I would be super happy with this. Um, like, it's a little bit drier maybe, and a touch more sibilant than the best sounding amps with this Asvara. Um, and you know, that's a little bit of the one of the tricks of this headphone and, and some of the other large uh, high-end, high-end planers. Um, but tight, and articulate and it demonstrated authority over this i mean it, it definitely gets a lot of what the the Sisfara has to offer um out of it um maybe like a touch more like sort of crowded in its presentation and maybe just a smidge less fluid than like the best Sisfara amps i've ever heard um but really hard to hard to complain um switching over to the utopias uh you know very sensitive headphone they just pick up everything um great match here with the the z10 it's the super dark black backgrounds you hear nothing and like in the world of two amps these things will tell you exactly how much <laughs> noise floor you have no problem um but super articulate presentation um detailed but not harsh like sometimes i feel like the utopias um can be a little pushy a little harsh and that's why i often like them with like a fuller, richer uh, tube amp sound. Um, fantastic bass, just deep, controlled, just really, really lovely. Um, I also listen to them with a couple other headphones, the Meze Elites. Um, it adds some nice crispness to the Elites, which is good in my mind. It sort of tightens them up and, and maybe actually my favorite pairing uh, with the Elites that I've ever heard. Um, lower down in the spectrum, I uh, had the LSH P2s around a nice uh, another um, dynamic closed back headphone um, and and I think what sort of popped out to me uh, listening to the uh, z 10 on those is that you're sort of getting some of those best characteristics of solid state and tube uh, you know like you know a sound that's lifelike and open organic but with that solid state control and precision uh, and speed and that sort of tube bloom and space and, and maybe a bit more grace so um, yeah, I, I think for a, um, you know, for a dynamic and planar, uh, headphone amp, it is, it is a really nice piece and having the, the low and high was great. You know, I could sort of cater to, um, the, the utopias or the Sisfaras and, and like I said, being able to drive all those headphones well is just no small feat and, and not well, like great, like, like hearing what you want to hear out of a lot of these, um, as a speaker amp, let's not forget this thing has speaker taps, <laughs> um, as a, as a speaker amp, oh my gosh, so many cables, um, as a, as a speaker amp, um, this guy, uh, was really great. So I was, I was listening to him on a set of uh, Klipsch Heresy 4s, which are very, um, very uh, efficient speakers, rated 90, 90 dB, maybe an exaggeration. Um, should have a little video on those guys at some point. Um, and, and then comparing against, uh, you know, using this as the pre and power amp, since it isn't an integrated amp, and comparing it to um, separate components uh, in an all tube based preamp and a 300 B base set of monoblocks. So very very nice gear to compare against um that that setup probably edged edged this out for me or definitely edged it out for me um in terms of especially like some of the presentation i like with the slightly more forward mids of, of the 300b and whatnot but um just to like look at this objectively um you know also compared against uh, some some solid state monoblocks like to look at this objectively it is um 
This is like a super boring video. It's just my hands on top of a black box. But you know what? If you are subscribed to this channel and you haven't gotten used to really boring visuals by now, I... <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, it, again, you sort of, you get that sense of that balance between some of those great qualities like uh, that Solid State can bring, like, you know, speed and attack. Uh, and then some of those desirable spatial and, and sort of fluid qualities that you get with to be goodness. Um, uh, it, it, like I said, it doesn't exactly have the same fullness um, uh, uh, that I was finding in, in a, a single ended um, triode setup, which is tram transform coupled. And you will note, um, you know, with OTL and, and ZOTL amps, one of the arguments is to get rid of the transformer because um, many folks would say, that's sort of what you're hearing and that's sort of what you think of even as, as tube sound. Um, but the, 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 the set of mono blocks that I was listening to have very nice transformers. So I think they're mostly getting out of the way. That being said, um, I enjoyed that, <laughs> that presentation a lot. Um, uh, and I like, and I like this as well, but I think what this is, is, is you're getting tons of clarity, uh, in the treble region, like tons of detail in the treble region. Um, and, a mostly flat and even presentation. So nothing's coming overly forward. It's really balanced. Um, but yeah, I mean, what is this thing? This thing is crazy. I'm so glad they make this. Um, there's, there's just really nothing like this that I know of, you, you know? And so if this value proposition of having one dedicated system, uh, that you can put in, you know, your living room, uh, or your office and you can drive a set of speakers and you can, drive your whole headphone collection or your e-stack collection um you can have a remote and sit back and control the volume if like all of that comes together um to be a meaningful solution for you and you also you know can drop that kind of coin and you want sort of best in breed of all those things but trapped in one little box um i don't know that i can say this is best in breed because of course there's always something better and components give you more flexibility in that regard but i think across everything I threw at this thing, it just performed and performed and performed. I would be very happy with this thing um, in place of many of the of the pieces I have. Like I said, there were always little things I could point to that I liked a little more here or there with individual you know components that I compared it against. But I think you'd soon forget those once you plug this in and start listening. Um, very few, few sort of flaws or, or niggles to uh, niggles, naggles, wiggles, waggles, very few to little uh, things to complain about on this piece um cool well that's gonna wrap it up for now until next time this is signcraft signing